Hello everyone. Wonderful morning to all the participants who have joined the webinar today. You are looking at the endpoint management solutions portfolio. These are the list of products what we offer under the endpoint management division in Manage Engine. And today I'm going to extensively cover about the mobile device manager plus training. So I welcome you all for the MDM training program. My name is Ruben Karthik and I'm a product specialist. I'm associated with Manage Engine for the past six years. I do the training and implementation for the entire endpoint management solution. So this is a three weeks training series. We have made it in a way where the first week of the MDM training, it will be about the device onboarding and provisioning them, how you can onboard your devices into the management scope. And today, the second week of the training program, it will be about the app management and device security configurations on your mobile devices. And next week, it will be about the modern management of Windows 10 and Mac computers using our MDM module. So in case if you have missed any of these training program or you would like to revisit the training videos, you can always visit the below mentioned URL. And also all the registered participants will also get the recorded training video once after the webinar is over. Well, let's see what we have uh, the agenda for today. So first, I'm going to give you the overview of Mobile Device Manager Plus. This section is important for those uh, who are evaluating our MDM or who are not familiar with the MDM management. So I'm going to give a quick introduction about our Manage Engine Mobile Device Manager Plus product and the architecture and ports required to manage your end devices and how exactly an end device the mobile phone will be managed into our product will also be covered in the first part of the training then we'll get to see about the app lifecycle management where i'll demonstrate how to install uninstall and update your application at the same time even if your organization demands to deploy your own enterprise app how we can test and deploy your production environment will also be covered in the training today followed by I'll help you how we can prohibit certain application and web content from your devices. And in case if you have any point of safe devices, how we can lock such device with specific applications alone will also be covered. And how we can remotely troubleshoot an end device. So in case if that is with the field engineer and you're not able to, uh, in case if the end user doesn't understand the troubleshooting steps, how we can remotely connect to your mobile phone or the devices and how we can troubleshoot will also be shown today. And the benefits of scheduling and always update and how we can lock your devices to a particular geofencing or the boundary will also be discussed as a use case. Then as a last use case, I'll also show you how we can secure the corporate information in case of the device is lost or stolen. How we can prevent such uh, leakage of corporate information will also be discussed. And at the end of the training, I'm going to share certain real-time scenarios and the solutions which has been reported by the customers during my support experience. Meanwhile, if you, the viewers, have any questions or if you have, would like to know about any of the methods, you can always comment in the chat. Our panel can help you right away. So first, like I said, I'm going to show you the overview of Mobile Device Manager Plus product. So these are the list of operating systems which are supported under our MDM. So for iOS, we manage iPhone, iPad, app, MacBooks, and Apple TVs can also be managed under the iOS operating systems. And for Android, you can manage Android device and Android tablets. Now we also started supporting Android TVs, which can be managed under the MDM product. And for Windows, it will be Windows device, Windows tablet, Windows 10 laptops and Surface Set and Chromebooks can also be managed with an Opera Deck. So these are the list of operating systems and the device types which can be managed under our MDM module. And the Mobile Device Manager Plus in Manage Engine is available in three flavors. One, as an integrated part of Desktop Central, which is a unified endpoint product. So this Desktop Central solution helps you to manage your laptops, uh, desktop servers. Along with that, you'll also be able to manage the mobile devices. And in case if you're looking anything specific only to manage your mobile devices or tablets, then we also offer the standalone MDM, which is available on both on-premise and cloud. And 
in case if you have any audience who's from a service provider background where they wish to manage devices from different companies then we also have the mobile device manager plus msp which is available on both on-premise and cloud and we understand it would be easy for an admin to administrator to integrate with as many applications as possible in order to ease the management purpose so we offer the integration with our own help this tool called manager and service desk plus which you can integrate with our mdm At the same time you can also integrate with other help desk solutions like spiceworks jira service desk zendesk and service now and we also offer the integrations to with our own software called zoa crm which is the client relationship management tool and we also have a creator app creator application called zoo creator which can also be integrated with the mdm so in case if you're looking anything outside these options you can always uh, make use of the api which you can find it in the below mentioned url through which you can perform a seamless integration All right now in order to illustrate the architecture so there are three major components which involves and you wish to manage a mobile device so first the mdm server which can be on-premise. If not, if you want to go with a SaaS-based solution, we also offer the MDM cloud. And the second major component is the notification services. So for Apple, it will be Apple push notification service. And for Android, it will be Firebase cloud messaging service. And for Windows, it will be Windows notification services. And as a third component, you need the the mobile device itself so that these are the three major components which plays around for managing a mobile device and in order to explain the workflow or how does an end device will be managed using a solution let's take an example where i wish to find out a location for an android device as an admin i log into the product i'll go to the inventory section enable a command called locate device which in turn will be passed to the notification service. So in case if you have an on-premise MDM, you need to make sure you allow the necessary ports to reach your notification service. So in case if it is an Android device, our MDM server will contact the Firebase cloud messaging service and which in turn will use the UDID of the device details to wake up. So once the device is contacted by the notification service, it which in turn will communicate to your MDM server and know what commands to be executed so in this example it will perform a geolocation tracking and would it will send the coordinates back to the mdm console which as an admin i'll be able to see it in the product ui so this is how the communication flow will be from mdm server to the notification service and the notification service to the devices so in case if you go with an on-premise model and you don't wish to expose your mdm server because the devices will try to communicate to your mdm server to perform any command and if you don't want to expose your internal mdm you can also go for a secure gateway component which can be installed in your dmz zone so the internet devices will try to communicate only to your secure gateway component which in turn will redirect the communication to your mdm and these are the list of ports used by our mdm on-premise solution so for the devices to mdm server it will use 9383 which is an https port on for for the server to notification service it will be 443 and devices to the notification service will use these list of ports and you can also visit the below mentioned url to know the inbound and outbound and what protocols is used for the mdm communication and so you might wonder how does an mdm actually manage the end device as we saw this solution follows the client and server architecture so obviously you need to have an an agent or a profile installer in every devices you are going to manage. So when it comes to Apple, Windows, or Chromebooks, you don't necessarily need to have an application installed on your devices. We just leverage the native OS client available on the devices using which we will install the MDM profile to manage. But when it comes to Android devices, you need to have an ME MDM application deployed to control your devices or send out the commands. And there are different types of enrollments which we have, which has even been discussed on the first week of the training. And in case if you'd like to know about the supervision of devices or different type of enrollment, you can also uh, comment in the chat section. Our expert panel team can provide you the necessary help articles. 
So this is a quick introduction about the MDM and also I'll take you to the product UI. So you have the home tab where you can find out the list of devices you manage, how many smartphones and how many tablets and laptops you have under MDM can be seen here and also the always why split up will be displayed and as an admin you can also find out the audit log information so what action has been performed by the administrator or if in case if you have a role based administration access you can also find out which technician have performed what actions can be seen from this audit log information and device management is what i'll be covering most of the session today so where you can deploy application configure uh, profiles to your devices so most of the options whatever you see here will be shown in this in today's training and under inventory tab you get to see the device details like this, this device properties can be seen and as an admin you can choose what are the columns you wish to see from this very same tab can be seen and if you'd like to know more about a particular device you just need to click on the device name and you'll be able to see the device details and the locations of the devices and these are the commands which can be initiated these are the on-demand commands which can be initiated to the device from our product and enrollment is what about the different type of adding your devices or say onboarding devices into the management scope these are for the BIOD devices and the and the methods which, which is described under the Apple or Android division is for the administrative mode of enrollment under reports tab you can see basic predefined reports and in case if you're looking anything to customize based on your own requirement the required columns you can also build your own report be it a predefined or a custom report you can also schedule them say every monday or every friday i would like to see about the devices added to the product or say the apps installed on the devices likewise you can have any example which can also be scheduled using our reports tab and under admin section the basic administration activities can be done like say a role-based access like i said before you get to add users and define roles to the technician and even choose the type of devices which can be managed by the administrator and you can also rebrand your own company logo in place of manage engine you can change it and so these are certain administration actions which can be done on the product so just like want you to want all the participants to get familiar with the product ui and when you go with the desktop central so the same option whatever you see under the mdm console can also be seen as a left left side option under the unified management product called desktop central right so now we'll discuss about the app management and i'm going to show you how to install and uninstall application using our mobile device management plus product and so before i show you the process of installing an application i would like to show you the workflow of the app management so each mdm server will have their own app repository so as an administrator you have to add the application into app repository there are different ways you can add them which will be covered in the upcoming slides and be it a place for application or an enterprise app you have to first add them to the app repository section once then you can distribute the application to your devices if it is a place store application the apps will be initiated or the installation will be initiated from the store directly but in case if it is an enterprise application the installation will be triggered from the mdm server so let me quickly show you how you can add a place store application and distribute your end devices for that you go to the device management section you have app repository as an option over here so you can add an apple app store or if in case if you have your own enterprise application you can choose the appropriate app type and proceed with the proceed with adding the application to your repository first let me show you how to add an apple app store application let's assume i wish to deploy the zoho meeting which is a conferencing tool to our end devices or employees i'll just search for the application and you also be able to choose the appropriate place or location and then search for the app and then once the app is available you just need to select the application which automatically prefers the version details the latest version available on the apple store and the bundle identifier for the application and even as an admin if you wish to automatically remove this application if the mdm profile is removed meaning if it is a bod device 
if the end users changes the device or leaves the organization when the MDM profile is removed from the phone I also wish to remove this particular application then I'll select this option and also if I wish to restrict the users from storing this particular app information onto their personal iTunes or iCloud accounts then I can also enable this option so likewise I'll choose certain app policies and also if if an app developer supports more customization on the application you can also work on an XML and upload them. We have this learn more article to show you how we can modify the application based on the requirement, like say to automatically configure the username and email address it can be seen here. Based on which you can add the details and upload it to your app repository. So once the app is added, then you can go to groups and devices section. And I recommend you to Test this app deployment on a particular device, maybe one or two devices, and then you go on with the bulk deployment, maybe to your production environment. So since I added an Apple App Store application, I use the filters to find out the Apple devices. You select the device, and under action, you have the option called distribute application, distribute apps. And you can first let me show you how you can distribute an application to the app catalog. This is like a self-service portal feature where this might be ideal for the BOD devices where you don't want to silently install the application. But as an administrator, you wish to deploy the required application to the employees and it's the end user's choice to choose what are the applications they want and then they can initiate a deployment. So I'll go with this option, distribute to the app catalog. And I'll also like to notify the users via email that this particular application has been distributed. So I'll select the application and click on next. So now the end users will get an email notification and also the app will be updated on the MEMDM application, which is available on the device end. So as an end user on the device end, you can log into, you can open the MEMDM app, you can click on the app catalog section, and here the users will find out the list of application distributed by the administrator. And if he, and the users can choose to install, which in turn will ask or prompt the users to provide their own iTunes account and password to complete the installation. So this is how, as an admin, I can add a Play Store application into the repository and distribute to the app catalog or to the user. And the users go and find out the required application as per their requirement and can initiate it. So once the user provides their Apple iTunes account, the app gets installed on the device end. And when, it, when you go with this particular procedure, as we saw, every device must be provisioned with an iTunes account, and obviously the user intervention is required. A user has to go to the app catalog to complete the app installation. And we also have a way where you can silently install application, and there are certain prerequisites which has to be met in order to silently deploy an application, and it depends on the operating system. On for an iOS device, you need to integrate your MDM server with Apple Business Manager. And for Android, you need to integrate with Manage Google Play. And like I said about the prerequisite, you need to have an account with Apple Business Manager or Google. You can even have a corporate Google or Gmail ID. And for an iOS device, the device must be supervised. So if you don't want to, even if you don't want the users to click on OK, and if it is to be silently deployed, then the device must be supervised, meaning the device has to be added via Apple Business Manager or Apple Configurator. And for Android, the device must be running above Android 5.0 or later version. And this is the workflow of the silent app deployment. So first comes the integration of uh, the ABM or Google portals with our MDM server. Once done, you can through or purchase application from the respective portals through which you can distribute to the devices. So first, let me show you one by one. First, let me take you to the process of integrating with Apple Business Manager and how to distribute. So you have the option under App Repository, Apple App Management. This has to be integrated if you wish to silently deploy application onto your Apple devices. And I've already integrated my MDM server with ABM account. In case if you haven't integrated, you would see an option like this, Apple or app management, and you would see two option, configure apps for business or apps for school, which is a dedicated portal for 
educational institution, which is called as Apple School Manager. But for this scenario, let me go with the Apple Business Manager. Let's assume I want to deploy the application for a business organization. And the procedure for integrating your MDM with Apple Business Manager is you should have an ABM account. You need to log into your ABM portal. Let me log in to my ABM portal. And under the ABM portal, you will see the option called settings, apps and books, and you will see the list of M the MDM servers added to your ABM portal. You just need to download the S token and upload it back to your product. So go to the settings tab, apps and books and server token where you can download the appropriate S token, apps and books. This is like a two-way handshake. So you get the file from the ABM portal, download the S token and upload it into our manage engine console. And once the S token is uploaded, you must save the options to be the app installation type to be without Apple ID. So because if you go with the second option, which says prompts for Apple ID, even though you import application from Apple Business Manager, when it comes to the installation on the user end, it will still prompt the users to provide their Apple iTunes account. But when you go with without Apple ID, using your ABM account, the, the application will be silently installed on the device end. And you must mention your email address or the administrator email address because the S token, whatever you upload is valid only for a year. So as an admin, you will be contacted before the expiry so that the integration works without any issues. And once the ABM is integrated, now you can go to Apple Business Manager and go to the content section, apps and books, and search for the required application. And you should make sure the, the app has the option enable as device assignable. Only if this option is enabled, then as you'll be able to silently deploy the app on the devices, it's better to verify whether this option is enabled for the appropriate application you're looking for. Once the app is selected, you can choose to which MDM server you would like to add the application. And even though it is a freeware application, as, as, an, as an advantage, Apple Business Manager demands to enter the quantity or the number of devices for which you're gonna distribute the application. That's the license management part. The Apple demands to enter the number of devices needs to be added. Once you click on get, then the apps will be added to your ABM portal. So as you could see, I can even initiate a sync to find out the application which has been added from my ABM. And once the sync is completed, I can see the list of application being added. So these are the seven apps I've added through the ABM portal. Now, when it comes to the installation part, I'll go to groups and devices. Let's assume I've already tested this application and it's in, it worked fine without the user prompt. It silently got installed on the device end. Then I'll choose the appropriate groups and choose the required application. And now I'll enable the silent installation. And I even don't want the users to be notified about the app. I want to silently perform an installation on the device end. Then I'll just select the app, select the required application, and then click on. Okay. So now the apps will be silently distributed on to the users. And on the user end, the apps will be silently installed. So it will straight away start to install. They do not prompt the users to provide any option. And if in case, if it is a non-supervised device, even though you've added the application from the ABM portal, if for example, if it's a BAOD or a personal Apple device, it will just ask the users or notify the users about the app installation. And when the users clicks on OK, it will start to install silently on the device end. And if the user denies the app installation, it will be available on the MEMDM app, app catalog section. And when the users go back to the app catalog to initiate it, it will not prompt for the Apple ID. So this particular method is ideal, which does not prompt the users for an Apple ID. And also it is possible to silently install the application. And as a recommendation, we 
ensure the devices are connected to a Wi-Fi, in particular if the device if the app size is more than 200 MB, because Apple doesn't let you to download an application from Play Store if the app size exceeds more than 200 MB using mobile data. So that is about the Apple app management where you can in get application from ABM portal and sync with your MDM server to silently install. For Android, you can integrate with your G Suite or without G Suite account. So in case if you haven't integrated with your managed Google Play service, you would see an option like this where you can choose to register with G Suite or without G Suite. And when you click on configure now, this takes you to the Android for Work page where you can click on get started and choose the business name where you can mention your appropriate organization name over here and verify whether this EMM provider is mentioned as manage engine EMM. And you have to update the details over here as a data production officer and you representative. So these engineers will be contacted by Google if in case if they have to discuss about a privacy or security related services these officers will be contacted for it. Just need to mention these information. This has become mandatory once after the GDPR law has been passed. So update these details. And like I said, even without a G Suite, with using your corporate Gmail ID, you can just click on configure now to update these information. Once done, the integration will be completed. And once the integration is completed, you would see an option like this. And in order to add the application, you don't have to uh, log into your Google Play Store separately where you have the iframe integration supported in our Manage Engine product itself. So you can just click on Add Apps once you have integrated with your Gmail or G Suite account and you can search for the required application. And just as an admin, you just need to click on Approve, which in turn will be silently added to your app repository. So once after the app is approved, I can just go and click on Save and Syncs, which starts to import the application from my Manage Google Play account to the app repository. And moreover, so whatever app you add either from Apple or from for Android, you can just search for the required application. And you can also pre-configure certain permissions for the application. Let's assume I want the location service to be always on but the, when the user open this particular application, I'll choose allow and allow where the users cannot, or even if I want to deny the camera functionalities within the application, I'll choose this. Likewise, you can add the required application to your app repository and click on the app name to configure certain permissions in case if it is even a Play Store application. All you need to do is just click on the app name in order to configure the required permissions for the app. Once done, the same procedure where you can go to the groups and devices section, select the required groups and distribute the application. So once done for the Android devices, it will straight away start to install. So you would see in case if it is a personal BOD device, a work account will be added. Once the work account or workspace is created on the personal device, the app will start to install. And the app, whatever you distributed through our MDM, will be installed inside the workspace account. And let's assume I've installed the Zoho CRM application, and you would see a work patch or a briefcase icon, which depicts this application as an office app, and which has been distributed through our MDM. And when a user opens the application, these are the app permission, which is pre-configured by the administrators. So users will not be able to disable location data or contacts when they use this particular application. So this is how we can integrate with your managed Google Play account and add the required application using our iframe integration. You don't have to separately log in like how we have done for Apple. So you can straight away click on add apps, search for the required Android application, and approve it. So in case if you have any questions related to the app management, either adding an application manually through Apple App Store or how to integrate with Apple App Management or manage Google Play Circle, you can always comment in the chat. 
and our expert panel team can answer your questions. Now I've shown you how to install an application in order to update the very same app which has been distributed. There are two ways which you can actually control. One, for example, if you wish to automatically update the apps whenever there is a new version available in the market, I don't want to manually go and distribute. I want the apps to be silently updated. Then you have a section called automate app updates. You just need to enable this option and click on save. So this ensure whatever app has been already distributed and which requires an update that will be silently distributed or updated on the device end. But in case if you want to control the app updates, I don't want to silently update any of the application. I want to manually verify the app version and then distribute. Then you can go to the app repository section where you would see an option on the top where it says five apps updates are available. As an admin, you can click on the count which shows what are the application which requires an update. You can click on the app name. Let's assume Google Chrome as an update and I can click on the app name. I'll go to the distribution details and there are two devices which have the Chrome application. I can either choose to update all in case if I just wish to update the Chrome browser alone. If not even in this particular app, I don't want to up update it to my administrative device. I just need to do it for the testing device and I'll just click on update now. And once I click on update, either I will get an option to update automatically or distribute to the app catalog. And as an end user, they have to go to the MEMDM app, app catalog to even update this application. So there are two options which is available. So this is how I can control an app update when it, when it comes or when it gets released. Either I can silently update or as an admin, I can manually go and update it to each and every device. Now let me show you how you can manage your own enterprise application. And when it comes to have your own enterprise app, you might wonder is it is it mandatory to have an ABM or a managed Google Play account? No, not required. And also, is it possible for you to test your own apps before deployment? Yes, using our managed engine MDM, you can even test your own app, like how you do it for a computer. Same, you can also test your own enterprise app on your mobile devices and then distribute to your production environment. And as a prerequisite, when if you wish to deploy your own enterprise application for iOS the device has to be supervised in case if you wish to silently install the device has to be supervised and for Android it has to be either Samsung or provisioned as a device owner so if you want to know the meaning of device owner that is a separate way of enrolling the devices through this method which gives you an upper hand so you can comment in the chat section to note the enrollment procedure if not you can revisit the previous uh, training program or the training video all right so now let me show you how we can add your own enterprise app and deploy it to your end devices. For the, for the same, you can go to the app repository section, click on add app, either if you have the IPA file, if you want to distribute your Apple enterprise application, you can go with this option. If you have your own uh, Android app, like if you have the APK file, which you want to distribute, you can choose app Android enterprise application and choose the app needs to be deployed. And you can search for the APK file. And you just need to select the APK which you want to add it to your app repository. So automatically when you upload the APK, it validates the app information. The app name is Z delivery and the app version is this and the app identifier. Everything will be automatically added or pre-filled when you just select the APK file. And then in case if you want to configure any additional parameters or configuration to the device, like say a username or device name to be, needs to be pre-configured, you can just update it via the dynamic variable concept. Once done, you can just save the app to your app repository. So now this app has been added in order to distribute. I can just make use of this quick launch option over here. I'll click here to distribute the application. Neither I can select a group if not since this is an enterprise application I want to specifically select few devices and test them so I'll select the device I'll choose distribute application and choose silent app deployment let's assume I've installed this application and it seems to be working fine then I'll go to the production environment even if you want to test it in bulk 
you can also create a test group under this very same section and distribute your devices and let's assume this app has been installed on all of my production devices and after a month I've update there is a new update available for this very same enterprise application which has certain enhanced features then I can just go to this very same app click on the app name and I can upload the latest version so remember I've updated the first Z delivery 1.1 version before now I'm selecting version 2 and the newly added version will act like a beta now so an older version of the app is already available on the repository the version what you're trying to update now will just like act like a beta version I choose yes and the version 2.0 will act like beta now if I want to test this latest update I'll just go to distribution details instead of choosing the stable version I'll choose the beta version and then go to distribution details to test this very same update on few devices I can choose certain test group here and I'll choose the option to update automatically so it will silently update the application on these devices once done if I found out there is a problem with this latest version so I want to prepare a new APK with uh, with more fixes then I'll just go ahead and replace the beta version and I'll choose the version 3.0 seems to be stable I'll just go and add them to their app repository once the app is added then I'll go ahead and distribute to my devices so now the version 3.0 will act like a beta and I'll just go on and test them and if in case of the 3.0 version seems to be working fine then I'll just go and mark this particular update as stable so once I choose the option as stable then I'll be prompted either to update the apps automatically on all the devices which already have the Soho delivery application would you like to update the apps automatically since it is an enterprise app I'll just choose yes update the apps automatically and in case if you have a different business requirement you can then distribute to your app catalog or you can choose distribute later and whenever you wish to update the application you can go and choose the option so this is how I can add our own enterprise application to the app repository and test them on few devices and then update your production environment So in case if you have any questions related to the enterprise app deployment please feel free to post them in the chat and our team can help you now let me go to the next use case so how is it possible to prevent the users from installing malicious app on the devices yes we have the profile management so we have separate profiles for iOS Android and Windows so as an administrator you can create a profile for iOS or Android in order to restrict the users from installing the non approved application so when you go to the restriction tab you have restriction related to the device functionality and security related while you wish to restrict the data from managed application to unmanaged app can be restricted likewise so as per this use case I'll just go to the application tab and I'll enable this particular restriction so if I choose the option user can install unapproved apps as no then whatever app you distribute through our MDM can only be installed onto your managed devices and even if the end user tries to install a non-approved application it will be automatically uninstalled so this is one way where I can prevent the users from installing a non-approved application same goes for an Android profile too so I can create an Android profile and the restriction you can see the restriction option related to the Android OS and you also have an application tab here or you can just go ahead and restrict this option so you must save the profile and you need to publish this profile to distribute your devices let's assume I have created this profile to prevent the use from installing a non approved application so once the profile is published I'll go to the groups and devices section same way I can select the required groups and then associate the profile I can choose the appropriate profile and select it so this is how I can prevent the users from installing any unapproved application and in case 
if they already have the application then you also have another way where you can go to the inventory section and prohibit apps so you can go to the inventory tab app section so here you can find out the list of applications installed on your end devices and let's assume i want to prevent the users from using hangouts or certain other apps then i'll select these application and then blacklist this app either i can choose the options to blacklist either to a particular group of devices if not to all the devices and once an app is added to the blacklisted section then as an admin you can define what actions to be done or performed on the blacklisted app either to uninstall immediately or send a notification to the users with a grace period say the users will get an email with stating the list of application which has been prohibited by the administrator and if not just send a notification email so like this you can choose the defined action to be performed on the prohibited application so this is how i can prevent the users from either installing the malicious app and even though if they have i can track down and prohibit such application onto my managed devices and the next use case likewise say how to prevent the access of malicious website say so i prevented the app access now or the app installation now how to prevent the website access same you also have a profile restriction for android and ios where you can go ahead and perform a web content filtering so you can go to the payload called web content filtering where you can go with two options and also enable automatic restriction on malicious content and also if you want to filter the urls or domains based on these options like when you go with whitelisting whatever websites you mention here or whatever url you update only these websites will be launched by the device browsers and rest of all the websites will be restricted but when you go with blacklisting option these websites whatever you try to or whatever you are looking to prevent it from the user access then you can mention those list of the details or web urls over here which will not be accessed by the devices this is for Android. The same option will be for iOS too. So you can go to web content filtering here and choose the same option, whitelist or blacklisting the websites. This is how I can prevent the users from accessing certain malicious websites. And even though if you want to configure VPN to your devices, so auto connect VPN. So whenever the users, uh, if you want to automatically connect the devices to a particular virtual network, they can just even configure this list these are the list of vpn clients which we support in our mdm and you can update the server details and all the managed devices to whichever you apply this profile they will have this vpn profile auto applied automatically on the device end and using which you can also monitor the website which has been accessed by your managed devices and how you can whitelist specific application. Let's assume these are certain point of sale devices, or this could be on a retail shop, or this, the devices might be used by the delivery guys. So how you can restrict the usage of certain application, or let's assume I want the users only to use set of application what I configure on the device end. So for that, you can go to the profile management again. So we have kiosk profile. So where you can configure the application which can be used on the device end. Either you can go with single app or multi-app kiosk mode. So when you go with single application, you can choose to which application has to be um, allowed on the device end. So whenever the users unlock the phone, they can only access to this very same app and the app will get auto launched. And when you go with multi-application, then you can choose the rest of application which needs to be allowed and you also have the option like say you can when you use our mdm launcher you can go with the other option like custom settings application where you can uh, allow the users to configure or change wi-fi or brightness or even mobile networks can be modified and also you can leverage yet another permissions like uh, the volume control or 
the usage of power button can either be allowed or restricted likewise you can just go with multi application and like i said when the user unlocks the device they will get access only to these three applications nothing else apart from it so to show you the ui how it will look like on the user end so if it is a single app as soon as the user unlocks the device the single app gets auto launched and if it's a multi app kiosk mode these are the three applications what an administrator could have configured using the kiosk profile and only these three applications will be allowed on the device end so now let me show you how we can troubleshoot a device of remote users so the remote troubleshooting might come up when there is an issue on a corporate device and the user is outside the organization let's assume since we are all moving towards a remote work culture if the device is or on the user end and they're out of the organization and if they're not that technical how you can easily troubleshoot such scenarios is what i'm going to show you so we have this remote control option available in our mdms like how you connect to a laptop using uh, team or, or zoho assist application same way you also have the options remotely connect to your mobile devices now and as a prerequisite remote control is supported only on certain android devices like say samsung lenovo and sony devices can only be remotely controlled and other than these devices you can only remotely view and for apple you can remotely view and let me show you the difference of options too so in order to remotely control i'll go to this option under device management click on remote control and we use the zoho assist application for the remote management or for remote control so it initiates a session on the user end either you can let the users to accept the control in case if the user choose always allow and from then onwards the device will be silently connected to the then after the administrator can silently connect to the device end so as you could see this is as an admin i can even remotely control so whatever option i enable on the device end it will be reflected on the users too so this device is in kiosk mode so i can just go and this is how the mem dim app looks like and remember in the first use case like i said you can distribute the application to the app catalog uh, users will go open the memd map go to the app catalog section and click on install and if there is an update available they can go to the update section to update the installed application this is how i can remotely connect to a mobile phone and troubleshoot as a remote view i'll not be able to make use of the uh, options like how i control the user end i can only remotely see and as an administrator you can uh, you can call the users and um, direct them to the appropriate troubleshooting steps which needs to be performed on the device end so let me show you the list of devices which can be remotely control and which can be remotely viewed so remote control is supported like i said only in samsung lenovo sony and other oem so these are the other manufacturers who support the remote control functionalities the manufacturer has to support the remote control option in order for us to manage engine and as like a mobile management solution only then we'll be able to remotely control but other than these manufacturers you can still remotely view and help the end users in performing a troubleshooting task that's the use case which i wanted to share you and now how we can restrict the devices from leaving a certain area so how we can lock your devices to a particular geolocation we have geofencing feature for that which is also available under device management so when it comes to geofencing first we have to create a fence repository so we support of creating a fence from 150 meters to 500 kilometers so let's assume i'm creating a fence for 100 kilometer radius in new york so you can even choose if you want to point out a particular office location or your state location you can just choose the appropriate place from the geofencing map and they can choose the radius too 
and then create a fence repository. So first comes creating a repository. And if the device moves outside this fence repository, you can apply a policy to it. So what are the actions needs to be performed if a user moves outside the location can be determined by creating a policy. So you can go to the fence policy section, create a policy based on the requirement. Let's assume when a user steps outside the geo fence, immediately I want to be notified about it. So I'll just choose send email to administrator and mention my email address. And then also I want to immediately lock the devices. So you have a lost mode, which I'll discuss in the upcoming session, the upcoming slides. And this completely locks the device and also have an option to remotely generate an alarm. So if a user steps outside the geofencing, it triggers an alarm and also notifies the users about it. Likewise, I can first send a notification and also enable the last mode, which completely locks the devices. And even if the device doesn't come back within a day, I can go ahead and completely wipe the device, even with the SD card. So this is how I create a fence for a post tree and apply a policy to the location so this is how you can lock or restrict the users or device from leaving a certain area and now the next use case i'm going to show you the benefits of automating or scheduling an os update so there are certain disadvantages in case if you don't update your os so meaning so it this might miss out certain security patches if you don't update your ios or a, or Android version, this might uh, lose out certain security patches. And also the older OS version tend to get slower with time. And when it comes to productivity, as if you're using an enterprise application, they, uh, the app developer might work on an application based on the appropriate OS version. And if the devices what you manage is has a holder OS, then it might, the enterprise app might go uh, might not be used properly and also the bandwidth might get choked if the users irrespective of time when they try to update the devices it might cause certain issues so that is why we have an option to schedule and automate the OS update which is like a one-time setup so you can either allow the testers or say test devices to immediately update their Android versions or Apple version at the same time you can also create a production policy where you can delay the update. So when Apple or Google releases an update, if you wish to delay the OS update, you can create a, a window-based deployment for it. So for that, you have the option under the device management again, automate OS update. So you can create a policy based on the OS again. So for an iOS, in case, so let's assume I'm creating this for the testing team. So I don't want to delay the update for theirs. So I'll just choose testing team and go ahead with an option immediately apply or update the devices. And also I can choose force OS update. So when Apple releases an update, let's assume if iOS 14 gets launched, then these devices, whatever I'm going to apply this policy to, those devices will be silently updated on the user end. And in case if I want to create a policy for the production environment, I can delay. And also for an Android, you have, you have an option to choose the preferred week of the month preferred day of the week and even the timing to update your Android version. Let's assume I don't want the users to update the devices on weekends. It should be only between the working hours. So I can choose Monday to Friday and say morning nine to six. I want the users to update the devices. You can just choose the preferred date and time. And also you can notify the users about it. And you can also allow the users to skip the deployment. So first, I'm delaying it for seven days. So for a week when Google releases an update, it's going to delay seven days for my production environment. And moreover, I will even allow the users to skip the upgrade for another seven days. So then after, after two weeks, all the managed devices will be silently updated. The OS will be silently updated on the device end. So this is how I can create different policies based on the requirement. And once after the policy is created, I can select them and distribute to the required groups. So this is how you can schedule and plan the OS upgrade to your managed devices. Now, 
as the last use case how you can secure a device when it's lost or stolen so you might this might be ideal for a corporate device or even personal devices in case if the user reports to you that this device is lost as an administrator first you can go to the inventory section so when a user contacts you that as a device is lost or stolen you can click on the device name and enable the location tracking find out the current location of the device so which gives you the appropriate location and moreover we also have an option where we track down the movement of the devices so as an administrator you can go to the inventory geo tracking and enable the location history that you can choose whether to track down every 100 meters or 500 meters movement based on the administrator's input the location will also be tracked so once after you perform the locate device command it gives you the current device location and if you want to find out the location history it also gives you where exactly the users have traveled every 100 meters movement will be captured and moreover with the current location it's assumed this is within the office premises then you can even generate an alarm to find out the location of the device if not if it is outside the premise or outside the geofencing location what you have configured then you can just go and enable the last mode which will completely lock the device it will just prompt the users to or whichever user have the device they can only call this number and you can provide the number callback number over here and even if you suspect that the user could have configured an easy detecting passcode or a pattern lock then you can just type anything and maybe configure a secure passcode and which in turn will be sent as an email to the user directly so if the user gets back the device you can just go ahead and disable the last mode so unless and until this if if you have enabled the last mode the user who has the device cannot perform any action the notification bar or switching off the device no actions can be performed on the device in unless and until you go and disable the last mode so this is how you can prevent the users from uh, or prevent the data from uh, getting lost in case if the device is stolen and moreover if you suspect that the device cannot be retrieved again then you can also go ahead and do a corporate wipe so corporate wipe will remove whatever policies or whatever document you distributed through our mdm will be deleted so it might be an email account or an application or documents which can be remotely wiped out in case if you go with a complete wipe it's a factory set everything will be deleted on the device so this might be helpful in case if you want to troubleshoot or lock your devices when it has been lost or stolen and moreover this is how the end user screen will looks like in case if the device is lost after you enable the lost mode so now we have come to the last part of the training where I would like to share some real-time scenarios and the solution for it. So first scenario I've taken up is to how we can prevent the users from uninstalling a corporate application. Same way you have a restriction policy for that. So you can go, I can, I'll use the quick options over here. So go to Android profile. So remember we did before to uh, prevent the users from installing an application same way you go to the restrictions tab go to the application section and you prevent the users from uninstalling the application so this is one way where as an admin you can prevent the users from uninstalling any corporate application so this will prevent any of the apps installed on the devices to be removed from the user end and scenario two say a user has reset the device and left the organization and by default as you all know now but all the Android devices comes with the uh, factory set protection. So how you can, uh, so even though it is a company device, if the, the previous employer left the organization, when you try to activate the device again, it might prompt you to enter the user's credential, the last employee's user credential. So in case if the last employee uh, is, is, is difficult to contact, so how you can overcome this situation. That is why we have a profile called endpoint factory set protection over here so you can go to the android profile efrp where you can co configure your corporate email id and account information here so even any device any corporate device or the devices for which you have deployed this pro profile so using this particular corporate accounts let's assume i'm co i'm configuring my corporate account 
for the CFRP program. And you can also get the account ad information by following this help article. So each organization will, will have their own account ID here, which can be mentioned over the section. So once after you provide these details, you can even go with multiple corporate accounts. So using this particular email address, I'll be able to unlock my device. So even though if the previous employee have left the organization, I can use my corporate email account or the administrator's email account to reactivate the devices. And the third scenario, so how we can prevent the users from turning off their locations on the Android devices. So for that, you have this restriction or the restrictions tab, location settings, and you can choose the location settings to be always on. So this, you can create a profile based on your business requirement. Like I said about the application restriction or location service restriction or EFRP or web content filtering. So you create a profile based on the requirement, save the profile and publish it to your required groups. And moreover, you can click on the help article. So when you create a profile and in case if you're not clear with this particular steps, you can always click on the help articles to every tab you go. We have the help article related to it. This shows about the Android restriction. And if you want to know more about the EFRP, you can click on the help article, which shows about the enterprise factory production program and web content filtering. So likewise, you can make use of the help articles and configure or create a profile based on your business requirement. Moreover, we have this live chat option. So whenever you have any doubts or you get stuck anywhere in configuration, you can always use make use of the live chat, so which is a 24 bar five instantaneous chat support channel, through which you can get in touch with our technicians and get a professional help. So these are the three scenarios which I would like to share it with the audience today. So in case if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. And that's all we have come to the end of the training. So please rate us on a scale of one to five. And five is the best. And we are all connected in the social media platform. So if you like the training program, please use the hashtag mobile device manager plus or slash manage engine and spread your love. And the next training schedule will be on 21st July. So there will be two sessions, one at 6.30 GMT and 11.30 Eastern time. So where we are going to show about the modern management of Windows 10 and Mac computers using our MDM. And I thank each and everyone for joining even this outbreak situation. Please take care of self and your family around you. Thank you again. Take care.